Hello, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions. Uh, this week I trained a bridge fabricator and we showed them how to create a parametric custom component that takes inputs based on the frame diaphragm information and rapidly creates that frame in the model. Now this customer specifically invested in an AGT robotic welding machine and they wanted to leverage the powerful link between Tecla structures and the Cortex software that processes those uh, assemblies to feed to the machine. And so I was training them how to manually create those frames, but then we discovered that, hey, the configuration of those frames is pretty similar across multiple jobs. And so they wanted a way to just enter in a few different parameters and then easily model in those frames and then rapidly get those fed out to their machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. All right, so we're here in Tecla Structures and I have a 3D isometric view on the left and then an elevation view of the cross frame on the right. Now I'm gonna simply activate the component and this is a custom part, so I'm gonna pick two points. The two points here are actually the control points at the center of the top hole of the top of the cross frame that attaches to the bridge girders and the stiffeners and the bridge girders. So I'm gonna pick those two points here and now we have that, uh, really within seconds, we have that frame here input. Now just to show you a comparison of time, if I would have manually modeled this all from scratch, it would have even me a fast modeler, it would have still taken me about probably 25 to 30 minutes just to get that in there. Now you could also just build generic custom components that get a starting point and then of course stretch these parts and manipulate them, but we wanted to make this really simple and easy for a new user to just rapidly get the information in so that way they could get this fed out to the shop. Now when I double click on this, uh, or actually single click on it first, you'll see that the two picking points are again at the pin location there at the top hole. So there's the top left and then we can see the top right and then we can adjust the work point locations for the braces and the laterals as required. Now if I double click on this, you're going to see that there's a lot of inputs and you'll actually see that the uh, cross frame is modeled in a sloped position. So sometimes we'll have uh, basically the cross frame drop here. And so if I wanted to actually input that here, let's say that I wanted a negative three inches or something like that uh, based on the grade of the bridge and uh, the lineup of the girders and how I want this frame to be modeled, you can see that I can enter in that dimension there and then you'll see that the whole frame geometry and everything drops. Now surprisingly, we were able to actually accomplish this whole layout and everything without having to do any uh, trig methods or functions inside of the custom component, which is, was really great and really handy. We are able to do everything with uh, distances, bindings, and even a little bit of trickery with a, a dummy part to basically move that up and down for the drop. But you can see here that I can control a lot of the different common parameters. So basically what I do with clients is I just research and work with them about what are the things that they want to be adjustable. That's gonna cover the 80% rule. And then I just go through those things and then we make those options and those switches. And then that gives them the power to easily select and modify this. And again, if there's something that they can't do in this particular component, then they can always explode it and then manually finish it off and manipulate it. But it still saves them a ton of time. Two or three minutes of input versus 25 minutes plus of manual modeling and then the risk of potential errors if you're manually modeling. Whereas if you wrap everything up in a component, then you're getting consistency on how these things are modeled and the start point that's created. The next thing that I explored with the customer with the training was what was the best route to create and automatically dimension the shop drawings? Well, if we come up here to the document manager, I'm gonna just go ahead and open up this assembly drawing that I had created for one of the frames. Now, when I go in here, you're gonna see that this actually looks pretty good. Now, I will say that Tecla has a little bit of a hard time trying to use its automated integrated dimensioning and special dimensioning rule functionality to try to automatically dimension this. I would have spent a lot of time and a lot of technical like expertise to try to automatically get this to come out. And this is where cloning or smart create in Tecla is actually very powerful. The main part of this assembly is the spacer plate in the middle. And I'm actually drawing this frame in the model oriented or model coordinate system. So it's drawn exactly like it's gonna be positioned in the model or the real world. Now that makes things for the Tecla automated dimensioning rules get a little bit tougher. And so what I did is I just manually created all the dimensions, moved the marks, and I even merged these model welds to clean this drawing up. Now what I'm gonna show you is that if I close this down, and that drawing was actually of this frame over here on the right, but if I select this particular piece here and right click and say inquire assembly, you're gonna see that that's the orange part or the main part of the assembly. And all the yellow parts are subattached to that. Again, this is not as simple as a beam or a column. It's a kind of a frame assembly with a lot of parts attached to that main part. 
And it's not as easy for Tecla to automatically dimension that. So here's what I did. I actually uh, went up to create fabrication drawing and you'll see that the smart uh, create tries to kick in. It's actually trying to detail this B8 frame and make it match the drawing I already created for A8. Now, before I even show that, I'm gonna just show you uh, some settings that I made here of how I started with the A8 frame. So if I just go in here, I just made some settings called build material frame. And when I create that drawing and then open that up, we'll see here that there is my B8 frame. So I'll open up that assembly drawing and it's gonna basically have no dimensions on it. And you'll see what the raw uh, drawing looks like where I gotta merge the welds and there's no cleanup or anything done on it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this down and then I'm gonna actually clone that drawing. So go back into document manager. We'll just delete this frame drawing out. And this time I'll select on the part again and I'll do create fabrication drawing. And um, here you're gonna see that again, the smart create kicks in and I'm just gonna go ahead and choose to create. So Tecla intelligently is actually reading the drawings that I've already cleaned up and it's recommending that it should try to clone intelligently from that previous drawing. So let's open this up. And I wanted you to see this live so you can see that sometimes it makes sense uh, to just use cloning where it's a good appropriate fit versus trying to figure out all the, the complexity and some of the nuances with the dimensioning rules. So here's that new assembly drawing and you can see that it says drawing was cloned. And then when I open that up, you know what? That's not too bad. That's pretty good. Um, maybe a couple, yep, maybe a couple things here with the merged welds that I might have to kind of uh, split those and then remerge them. But this is pretty good. It took me about uh, five to 10 minutes to clean up this drawing manually from no dimensions and to move marks around. But here with cloning, you can see that literally within like two or three seconds, it does about a 95% plus job on this with a little bit of additional cleanup and moving around. And you can see that this is not one of their standard frame plates. Like here I had to actually explode the frame component, modify this corner plate due to a specific unique condition. And then it uh, actually still did a pretty good job on the cloning. So again, these are the types of things that I go through and help clients navigate so that way they can be successful with Tecla structures as quickly as possible.